All right, looks like we're live. Let me grab my notes. I have a couple of the paintings that I've done over the last couple of weeks. I wanted to show how they were. Um, so we've got this one. This was that whimsy swipe I did. This is all nice and dried now. I just wanted to show how a couple of the paintings dried before we get talking about the discussion of craft fairs and art fairs. Uh, so this is the last of three. We've uh, the last two Fridays. We've talked about art fairs. The first Friday we talked about how to find them, what you're looking for, what to ask the event coordinator when you're deciding on which ones to do, and to decide if that event's good for you. And then the last week, so that was the first Fridays that we talked about. And then the last Friday, second Friday. We talked about uh, setup and what all to bring to make sure you bring. So today we're going to talk about the actual event and kind of some tips and tricks on, you know, always make sure you smile and, you know, all those kind of. Today's a little bit more of the um, basics here. Hey, Purple Gang, how are you doing? I haven't uh, chatted with you in a little while. Uh, Thanksgiving went real, real well. Uh, how was yours? I hope your Thanksgiving was well. We had a Thanksgiving over at my mother's house yesterday, and then just our immediate family here in our household. We're going to have, um, we're going to cook our turkey today, actually, as soon as I get done with this live stream. And a, about an hour, I'm going to be um, cooking my turkey at that time, turkey and mashed potatoes and green bean casserole and the whole works. Uh, we're going to be cooking today, actually. We don't do the whole Black Friday shopping. Uh, I just, I'm not into the big crowds. I don't do that. So yeah, I just want to show a couple of the paintings that have dried over the last week or two. So there's that one, and that was the Whimsy Swipe. Then this was that Sink Strainer Paint Pour. And these are 11 by 14. There's those two. And then I did, I have not posted a video for this one yet. So this is going to be hard to show because it's, three really large, and that's why I haven't posted a video yet. I haven't gotten done editing this video. Uh, it's got, it's didn't go in the frame of the camera very well. I've got to edit it a little bit. Good turkey day. Seven inches of snow and it's still snowing. Oh, wow. Nice. I love the snow. So this one is a big one, guys. It's going to be hard to show you all of them. So it's three. It's a triptych. So I'm just going to show you one at a time. So it's a eight by 24 inch canvas. So then when you get all eight inch, all three of the eight inch canvases together, it's then 24 by 24. But let me show you some of the. And it goes kind of, and I can't, I'll have to grab the third one. Let me grab that third one. So then they all three hang together. Hard to show you guys that one. That one's a pretty bigger one with all three pieces. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'll show you a little bit. And the, it looks real yellow. That's actually gold. On the camera, it's coming off as kind of a yellow. Here you can kind of see more of the shimmer of it, but yeah, it's actually gold. So yeah, those are some of the ones that I've done recently. And so the last uh, two Fridays has been about bazaars and art fairs and uh, how to sell your art locally at some of, of the events maybe around your area. And so we're going to continue on talking about um, what to do at the art fair, at the bazaar. Uh, I had a real good one a couple weeks ago. 
I might be bringing the paintings too close. Sometimes when I bring, I'm being told it might be buffering a little bit. Um, sometimes when I bring the paintings up too close, I'll take a break from showing some of the paintings for a quick second. And then sometimes that'll help give it a little break. Uh, we do have our Christmas tree already up because I do do so many craft fairs and bazaars that we had to kind of do it while we had the chance, while we had an opportunity. I guess I should bring it closer. Sorry, guys. And so um, uh, this is going to be, this is the second to the last live stream for this year for me. I'm going to be live right now. And then tomorrow uh, night at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Tomorrow night, there's going to be a bunch of giveaways, and it's going to be a little bit longer of a live stream, and I'm going to be painting live. So uh, tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 6 p.m. Uh, West Coast Time, it's going to be a fun live stream. And then that's the last day of November, so no live streams for um, – I will not be doing live streams for December, just to remind everybody. But there will be a movie – I'm in movie – I don't know why, a video, I'll be doing a video, releasing a video every single day in December. So I just got a little bit to talk about today on the last two live streams in this series. We've had lots more to talk about. So just a little short little bit. So, okay, now we're, we've talked all about finding them and what to bring and the setup. So now we're talking about the event itself. This is the day of, the actual bazaar, the craft fair, whatever they call it in your area. Art sale. There's so many names. Pretty much we're, it's going to be the same tips, tricks for any of those. So, of course, uh, dress nicely. Don't, you know, you want to be dressed nicely and comfortable shoes. You want to be presenting yourself well. You want to be so people can come. Hmm, I don't know. Hopefully it's okay. I don't know if it's buffering. Uh, we've had a good, I don't know, month or so with such great uh, no buffering. So hopefully we can... Uh, Knock on wood, have a good stream, no buffering. They need to stop. It needs to stop that. <laughs> but anyways, also, um, you want to always be smiling. Okay, it's great on your end. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, so you always want to be smiling and be approachable. You know, you don't want to be looking like you're uh, in a bad mood. Try to stay off your phone. You don't want your face buried in your phone constantly because when people are walking by, so your booth is what we're going to kind of call it. So your booth, your area, if somebody comes within, I call it the kind of one foot rule, you don't want to holler to other booth when they're shopping at the booth across the way or the one next to you and get them come into yours. Don't do that. That's rude. But if they're within one foot of your booth, you know, in the aisle, walking, kind of checking your booth out, but say hello. It'll draw them in. I say hello. They come in. They check out what I have to sell. Be approachable. Be friendly. But you don't want to be, like, overly cheerful and friendly because you can be overly, like, people don't want to sometimes, especially, like, bright and early in the morning, if you're too bouncy and cheerful. That's too much. Just a second. So you want to balance. You kind of want to balance. You uh, you don't want to be, you know, too overly, you know, crazy cheerful. But you want to be nice, positive, happy, smiling. And it makes you approachable. Nicely dressed, well put together. Then people want to talk to you, want to check out what you have. So if people come in then like a foot of your booth, say hello, engage them. Um, if they really come into the booth to kind of start a conversation, I'm going to take my glasses off because of the glare. Sorry, guys. Um, I had that horrible glare on my glasses. We do have a new light we're trying out. So um, I'll have to figure out the whole glare on the glasses thing with the new lighting. 
But uh, so uh, one of the things, so try to start a conversation. So some of the ways that I like to start a conversation is because I sell artwork, you know, you can kind of, um, whatever you sell, you know, if you sell jewelry, if you sell, you can kind of tailor your conversation starters to the things you sell. But um, some of the things that, you know, anybody can say is, hey, what is the best thing you've seen today? Uh, have you have you seen anything really cool or if they bought something, you know, at the bazaar, at the craft fair? Check it out. Say, hey, what did what have you bought? What did you get? You know, no, not like if it's in a bag all night, but if they're just carrying it out in the open, uh, you can kind of check that out and that starts a conversation. What is the coolest thing that you've seen this season at a craft fair? You can talk to people, ask people. That'll get people going, get people talking. And then because I sell artwork, I a lot of times will ask people, what's your favorite color? That's a great conversation starter. If I ask people what their favorite color is, it gets the conversation going. And it's a great intro to kind of the artwork. And uh, they can say, oh, my favorite color is blue. And then you're like, oh, yeah, I, I really love blue. As you can tell, I paint with so much blue. And, you know, so it, it just it's one of those conversation starters. You want to engage with the people as they're shopping, as they're coming into your booth. Be real friendly, but don't be overly like you can tell kind of judge the person a little bit. I hate don't I hate saying that judge the person, but judge their behavior if they're kind of wanting to engage. Some people you can tell they're just there to shop. They just want to check it out. Be friendly with them. Say hello, but don't be overly talkative. You know, you can kind of judge if they really want, you know, to start a conversation. But always say hello. Always be friendly and say hello. But you can tell the ones that you're going to talk with or not. I see the dog down, but I don't know what. Oh, the tree looks nice. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we put ours up. Uh, couple of weeks ago already but uh my good brother oh, thank you these little ones here are my favorite these uh they they're little birdies with the actual feather tails we have you know have the blue silver uh uh snowman theme to our uh decorate christmas decorations hey red how are you doing thank you Thank you. How are you guys? How's how are you doing, Dog Pound? How was your uh, Thanksgiving? How was your Thanksgiving, Red? I believe you're in the yeah. I think you're in the U.S. Uh, for all my U.S. Uh, friends, how was your Thanksgiving? I'll show a couple more of these. How these were drying. So this is one of the tiles I did, and it's dry. It's not quite cured enough to do a clear coat on it, a seal to seal it. But it is dry enough, um, dry to the touch and stuff. This was done on a live stream maybe a week ago or so. And then uh, this one here. And we've got this one. So I was showing a few of the ones how they've dried recently. And this is part three of my series of... Uh, craft fairs and bazaars and uh, I'm doing awesome too. We had a great Thanksgiving here as well. Uh, we went to my mother's house, but today we're actually, I'm cooking a turkey. Well, Mike's going to have to help me. I've bunged up my wrist, but um, he'll have to help me uh, lift the turkey and that stuff. Hey, H7, how are you doing? Uh, but so we're actually going to be cooking all of our, um, for our, just our immediate family. Nobody's coming over or anything, but we're going to do the turkey and the stuffing and mashed potatoes. You know, the whole works here. As soon as I'm done with the live stream, we'll start the turkey and start dinner. But uh, yeah, so the days um, we're just kind of finishing up talking about the actual event. Uh but we've kind of gone over uh, most of it the last two Fridays on your setup and what to make sure to bring to craft fairs, art fair, bazaars, whatever your area calls it. Uh, but yeah, we've had a lot of great information in the last two uh, li Fridays live streams. And just to remind everybody, I'm not going to be live in the month of December. So the month uh, tomorrow night 
at 6 p.m. I'm going to be doing a longer live stream and it's going to be giveaways and I'm going to be painting and it's going to be a super fun live stream. And then that'll be the last live stream for the month of uh, November, the last one for the year. because I won't be live in December. Then I'll start back with a regular live stream schedule the first week of January. Hey, Granny Josie, how are you doing? How was your uh, Thanksgiving? I hope you are well. Thank you for coming in. So just a few more um, things I want to talk about. Always try to stay busy. Don't try to, don't be sitting there at these craft fairs. If you're vending, if you're selling at craft fairs, don't have your face buried in your phone. People will just walk on by. Be looking around, be engaging, approachable. Um, Try to bring a small project if you can. People love to see if you can finish up a small painting, if you can be finishing up a small little jewelry product box, whatever you sell, if you can be like have a little small project, people like to see you doing your craft, see you kind of finishing things up or do working on a project. If you can, if I mean, if you're a potter or you do ceramic stuff like that, you can't bring your potting well and stuff. So only if you have a, something small you can be working on. People love to see that. Uh, am I finally giving Mike away? <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, so try to stay busy, too. So either doing a project or like straightening your booth. I mean, even if your booth is already, you know, all set up straight and try to act kind of, <coughs> sorry guys, try to act busy. So just be acting like you're straightening it, you're moving this, so the, you know, but not too overly busy. You know, it's all a balance. You don't want to act like you're so busy, you're not approachable, but that you're, you know, you, you're busy and you're doing stuff and you, stuff like that. You're ready to talk to anybody that might walk up. And then also one thing I'm going to say is we've had some sales this year that have had counterfeit money. So be on the lookout for counterfeit money. Be ready to take credit cards. Be ready to take because uh, have it posted in your booth that you can take credit cards. People are going to pay with credit cards. They love doing that because it's just easier for people to not have cash and stuff. Some people. And so um, be ready to take a credit card. And then also um, some of the things. Uh, oh, be ready to roll with the uh, really rude comments. I would say 99% of the time, the comments are always really positive, really constructive. And always keep that in your mind that the majority of the comments are good, but there's going to be that one person that is just going to say something rude. Oh, it looks like a unicorn puked all over this stuff. Oh, I've had, you know, just, so just roll with it. Be ready to just let it go. Roll with the rude comments. Don't let that, you know, just always keep remember that 99% of those comments are always very positive and nice. I get lots and lots of oohs and ahs and uh, that's just oh beautiful. And, you know, so people say some really nice things and then there'll be a couple of people. There'll always be that one. So just be ready to just roll with that. Um, and then also, uh, never pack up early, never, ever, ever pack up early from a sale. That is rude. That is rude to the people next to you. Unless you've sold absolutely every single item you brought, then I guess, yeah, but I've never actually seen that happen. Every single thing, you know? So if, if it's a slow event, if your stuff is just, isn't selling into that event, do not pack up early. That is rude. Do not ever pack up early. It's just not a nice thing. And most contracts say don't pack up early. Okay, then uh, last two kind of tips I had for today is also uh, take a picture of your booth, of your setup. If you like how you set it up, if you like how it is, take a picture for future reference, for future booths. 
Because when you go to do your next event, you can refer back to that picture and realize, okay, this is how I set it up. And this is what really worked for me this last time, or this is what really didn't work for me. So always take a picture of your setup of your booth, because that's super helpful. And then also at the end of the day, when the event is over, when you get back home, take some notes, take some notes for next year, take some notes at how that event went. Uh, if you want to go back to that event again, then the following year, just take notes to remind yourself. Cause I do so many events that I get it kind of confused. Oh, was that that high school or that high school that that weird, you know, some sort of weird organization of it or something. So always make sure that you go in and uh, take some notes to remind yourself of which event had whatever happening. You know, I always, uh, take pictures for future reference to refer back to for events. And I also take a few notes because I won't remember exactly what event I had. You know, this went really well. Want to make sure I do this again, or if this didn't work out, want to make sure we switch this up a little bit or, you know, however you have it set up your booth or things like that. So, all right, guys, I'll show you a couple more I have here. So this is another one of the, it's uh, really big. I'll try to get it all in. So it's a eight, eight inches by 24 inches. But it's a, another one of the three-piece sets. So what are you guys doing this weekend? Do any of you guys do the whole Black Friday shopping? We do not do Black Friday shopping. I don't do well with all those crowds. So this all gets set up three, three together and it's eight inches by 24 inches. And then when it's all three together, it's 24 by 24. It's hard to, it's, it's awkward because it's really like big with all three of them. Stay. It was wanting to fall. <laughs> Yeah, not leaving the house today. Yeah, we're cooking our our meal here. So we're not leaving the house either. We don't do the Black Friday shopping. Uh, we were laughing the other day in my live stream. I sent Mike out one year, one year for Black Friday shopping. It didn't go so well. He won't go back again. <laughs> so yeah, always broke on Black Friday. So it works good for you. Yeah, we're usually... Um, with our business, it you know, the majority of the business is in uh, the busier time of the year for us is in the summer. So we try to get our Christmas presents throughout the year, throughout the summer, because it's just easier on our budget to do it that way as well. So um, by Black Friday, we've usually um, got most of our gifts. So there's no need to even Black Friday shop because we've Tried to, as things were on sale in the summer, or as things we've found a good deal throughout the summer, we try to just get it then. So, yeah. But now my mom, she's a Black Friday shopper. She was getting ready to go shopping last night, some of the stores. I just think that's kind of ridiculous. It's sad that some of the stores are open on Thanksgiving. I took my glasses on. I off. I see. Hey, Katie, how are you doing? How was your Thanksgiving? What is my average paint bill per year? Um, I average about honestly about fifty to sixty dollars a month. So I haven't figured out that would come out to be what, like seven hundred or something a year. <laughs> that's a lot when you think about it a year but I also sell the art so I try to make it you know it works out oh you were decorating your tree oh awesome I'm so happy you're putting up a tree yes that's exciting you'll have to send me a picture I would love to see it so yeah we've got a couple this is an ornament I painted there's another one up there. This is an ornament I painted. It's turned around. It won't. It keeps flipping. There's a few ornaments that are uh, hand painted on our tree. So, yeah. But I've pretty much gone over all the tips and tricks I had at this point for the um, 
craft fairs and bazaars. So real quick, I just want to go over. So on each Friday for the last couple Fridays. So part one was how to find a craft fair and what you're looking for, what you want to ask the event coordinator and all that good stuff. And then uh, part two, which was last Friday, they were live streams the last couple of Fridays. Part two was how to set up a craft fair and what all you want to make sure you bring. Then uh, this uh, today, I just kind of went over some customer service, just always be engaging, always be talkative, but not overly, you know, have that balance and uh, be approachable and people will hopefully, you know, then buy your stuff. Uh, always smile, say hello. That's main kind of tips I had for today. But, oh, okay, you sent me a picture. All right. I don't, I think mine has my phone in another room. Um, but yeah, so what are you guys all doing this weekend? I uh, will be doing the live stream tomorrow evening. And then other than that, I'm going to be doing a bunch of Christmas paintings for this 30 days of Christmas paint pours I'm working on. <laughs> Drink just enough to take the edge off, but not enough to ruin your math. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Yeah, uh, this three piece. Yeah, I've got the two different ones. So I did. I did one. So there's two different three piece sets. I'll just show you guys the. So there's the one that's in kind of blues and browns. And then there's the one that's, oh, that's not good on the wrist. I should not be picking that up with the left wrist. It's not easy on the wrist. Oh my gosh. Okay. I got to set this down. Um, and then I did this one that was kind of fun, brighter colors, gold and things like that. No, you saved the drinking for after the craft fair and bazaar. No, uh, I haven't drank in so long. I, I thought about getting some Bloody Mary stuff and having a Bloody Mary, but um, I don't know. Uh, I've probably been two years, year and a half since I've drank anything. I just, we're not real big drinkers here. We don't drink a lot. Uh, hey, Mr. Dovoy, how are you doing? Happy Thanksgiving. I hope your Thanksgiving was well. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Purple Gang. Yeah, uh, H7, this one is mainly the colors of your paintings, your painting that you have. It's a lot of very similar, same colors, but it's a three piece. It's hard to show it, but it's, um, <clears throat> eight inches by 24 inches, three of them. So then it ends up being 24 by 24 inches. And I've got this one. It's got some beautiful gold through it too, you can see. And I've got, these are all the whimsy swipe. Going to see Spliffy Saturday, then a yarn store on Sunday. Okay. Yeah, the yarn stores can be super expensive. Ah, these are all big. These are all, I have to sit way back. <laughs> They're all 16 by 20 inches. Oh. So, yeah, so are you using, um, you had mentioned you made a loom. Are you using your loom still? That's super awesome. Um, but yeah, I've got a bunch of new uh, ideas for Christmas paint pours that are coming out. And then tomorrow night's live stream, I will be painting live and we'll be having giveaways and all kinds of stuff. And so uh, I will be doing uh, a couple of the whimsy swipes and just a bunch of different, some blown flowers, uh, a whole just kind of mixture of paint pours. But tomorrow night's going to be a little bit longer of a live stream. Yeah, I saw that, Mr. Doughboy. Um, here on the West Coast, we don't have AC more anyways. But um, I did read an article. I believe it's like 120 stores 
uh, I believe Michael's bought them out, Michael's Craft Store. So um, Michael's is deciding which ones will be worth the money or not. And so a bunch, majority will be closing down. And then a bunch will be switching to Michael's is because uh, Michael's bought them. You made three different looms? How, where do you fit these? <laughs> you must be, yeah, no room, looms everywhere. An Afghan, because an Afghan loom, a blanket loom. What's the difference between uh, like an Afghan loom and a blanket loom? I would think they would be a similar size. So what's what makes the difference between those? Uh, but uh, so those would take up big area. I had a knitting loom uh, along quite some time ago, but I didn't have the room for it even in a large apartment. And so I got rid of it to somebody that um, uh, already kind of was into that. I didn't want to learn a new hobby right then. <laughs> you did out of boredom. <laughs> well, uh, hopefully you're having lots of fun with it. Uh, yeah, I, I think that you can make, especially if you mix in some different fibers. Have you tried to uh, mix in like, some different textures of fibers. Sometimes scarfs, um, this one doesn't really have, but uh, sometimes some different fibers, some different textures. Like this one has a, um, this isn't knitted or anything. This is just one I bought at the store. Uh, but you can put like gold going through it. Oh, so many pretty things. But yeah, I'll probably do some of the, um, blown blooms on tomorrow night saturday night i'll probably do some of these that are kind of this whimsy swipe that i've been doing it's kind of an awkward way i'm having to sit to be in camera uh so an afghan is six foot blanket is nine foot and the peg space okay that's why i wondered the peg spacing oh wow uh Yes, you must have no room. Of looms everywhere. That's fun, though. Super fun. I bet you there's a lot of, um, is there a lot of YouTube um, videos on that? Could you start making some YouTube videos on how to do that? How you built your looms and what you're doing? That would be super cool to see. I would love to see that process. But I know you got that issue right now. Maybe you could um, eventually. I know you can't make videos right now, but maybe eventually you could start working on making some videos. And you have a bottle of champagne, you're waiting to open it. What are you waiting for? <laughs> you hang them from the RV ceiling. I guess you would pr pretty much have to. You wouldn't pretty much have to. You know, honestly, I love scarves too, and I have a huge scarf collection. But I forget to grab a scarf. I uh, I forget to um, wear a scarf. But I wore this scarf actually yesterday. And then I was like, I'm going to go ahead and just wear it for the live stream too. But um, so, yeah, uh, I have so many scarves. I have hand-knitted scarves. I have bought store-bought scarves. I have a silk scarf. I have just any type of material, a lot of just um, fun scarves. But I rarely, I forget to grab them. I forget to use them. I just have them kind of hanging on the wall, like a little scarf rack. <laughs> but now that it's getting cooler, I bet you I'll grab them a little bit more. So, all right, guys, today's going to be somewhat of a shorter live stream, about 10 more minutes, and then I'm going to get off of here. I usually go about an hour, hour and 10 minutes, but I think we're going to do about 45 minutes, so about 10 more minutes. Uh, cause I got to get that turkey in the oven. It's sitting out coming to uh, room temperature, well, not room temperature, but it's uh, just the finished last bit of thawing. And then I've got to get it in the oven. Uh, do I see a lot of knit stuff at fairs? Yes, I do. I do see quite a bit of knit stuff. Um, this last, oh no, two, two fairs ago, the people next to me, but she had, you know what I think sold so I see a lot of people that'll have like, they'll have just a booth full of hats or they'll have a booth full of scarves or, you know, anything like that. 
this lady next to me had really nice looking sets. So she had, um, she had some scarves, some really nice hats. And then she even had like a headband if you didn't want to wear the hat. But and some of the sets came with gloves even. Some of the sets didn't have gloves. But the hat and scarf sets, those sold like really good. They had um, like a, it almost looked like real animal fur, but it just had to have been really good quality, like a poof, like a pom-pom on them. But they were in like, you don't have like the mustard yellow color. It, it looks like this, but this is actually gold, but what it looks like on camera to you guys. But you don't have that color super popular right now. She had several sets in that yellow ochre, mustard yellow color. Those sold like crazy. Uh, but I definitely have noticed um, the people that sell a like gift set, they sell pretty good. Um, the, also what I've noticed sell is those, um, knitted things that are the knitted that I've noticed, but I've, a lot of people sell knitted stuff, but, uh, the, like people that have tall, um, boots and then they'll have like a little bit of a knitted cuff, a boot cuff above their, um, I don't know what you would call that. I can't think of the name, but those sell really good. And then also um, the messy bun hat. So it's it's a hat with an actual hole in it. So you can have your hair kind of sticking out the back. But I've noticed those sell really well with a hat with like kind of a hole in the back. Uh, people call them the messy bun hat. But yeah, I've noticed quite a bit, um, especially, I mean, up here in the Northwest where it's cold, probably where you're at, uh, Lost Dog, where you're, it's probably cold. A lot of the colder areas, I bet this time of year, are all that selling. Yeah, um, this lady next to me at this sale last week or two weekends ago, um, she had those sets and they were looked um, very uh, high end. And so they, uh, she was selling them. I believe it was a hat and scarf set for 60. And then there was some of the sets that was a hat, hat, scarf and gloves for 75. So um, that's what, uh, that's what I see. Uh, um, a lot of, uh, it keeps popping out and asking me if I want to pop out chat. I've never popped out the chat. But I think that's more of the chats really like flying. Oh, okay. But yeah, uh, uh, I see lots of hand knitted stuff. There's certain things you see a lot of. You see a lot of hand knitted stuff and then you see a lot of jewelry. But the ones that I see that really sell well is if they kind of have um, kind of have set themselves apart doing something a little bit different or stuff like that. Oh, okay. Nine to 14 hours to make just a scarf depending on size. Okay. Um, yeah. Is that on a loom? Uh, I, I've never really, I don't knit. I can crochet. I can crochet a scarf. I can crochet a hat. I can crochet a scarf. Um, I'll have to show you guys some of my, I was trying to look at my, I don't know where my crocheted hat I did. I'll have to show you guys one day, one of the hats I crocheted. Uh, but, uh, yeah, if you actually think of the hours it takes you, how much would you have to charge with, because yarn's expensive too. So after you've got the yarn and then the hours it takes you, it would be spendy. So yeah, wow. I know. I'm not real sure what Katie, what are you waiting on, Katie? Oh, the champagne. Oh, da, da, da. That's what she's waiting on. Oh, she told me about the champagne. I know about this champagne. That's it's political. Yes. Okay. She, I, yeah, I'll be, I'll be getting a, I'll be getting a bottle of champagne and we'll be popping that champagne at the same time. Uh, 
we'll have to chat as we drink our champagne someday, someday. But yes, I remember what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. But so, yeah, we've got uh, quite a few of these. I really like how this one turned out. It has that shimmer of gold, but it's real nice and subtle. But if you really, it's hard to see up on the camera, but there is a lot going on if you just look close. A lot of lacing of the gold through like here. A nine inch by seven foot scarf is $22 in yarn. Yeah, that's the thing is yarn so expensive for nice quality yarn. Uh, good yarn is not cheap. That is right. That is right. Up here in the Northwest, we have a lot of people that have alpaca farms. And so they do um, alpaca uh, yarn the old um alpaca fibers and stuff it's really nice yarn but that stuff is expensive i've been next to there's one lady in particular that does a lot of the craft fairs and bazaars and she um she does the alpaca fibers her stuff is so it's hand uh dyed and everything super expensive i can't imagine how as much a scarf would be in that A cheap yarn has one purpose. I, I feel like cheap yarn has one purpose for me to paint with well, two purposes for me to paint with. And then for somebody to learn, I think it's good for like a kid to learn or somebody trying to just learn their couple first projects. Um, but definitely nothing beyond that. Get, get one skein, learn on that one skein and then that's it. Uh, and then uh, I, I get the cheap yarn to for me to do the feathers for me to paint with. That's a good purpose for the cheap yarn. That's about it. Yeah. Uh, but we used to have in Portland, it was a store called Fabric Depot. And at Fabric Depot, they had uh, a huge yarn section and hand dyed fiber section. And they've now closed down. But uh, you could every once in a while at that that's place, but you had to go over to Portland and I hate going to Portland, but uh, you could get some reasonable, really, really good quality yarn, but at reasonable prices, uh, they would, it would just be whatever they have colors they happen to be have on sale or maybe clearing out. So um, it, uh, it wasn't always, you know, what you might be shopping for. But if you're just, you know, trying to get some really quality yarn, you could always get it there. But um, they've now closed down. They were a great place to buy fabric, all types. It kind of sucks. <coughs> yeah, the other Portland. The other Portland is about a south hour south of you. Um, I was talking about Portland, Oregon. But I want to see Portland, Maine someday so bad. Portland, Maine. Maine just looks so beautiful. But, uh, yeah, uh, we are maybe a half hour, 45 minutes if there's traffic from Portland, Oregon. We're in Washington, but we're close. Sweet Sounds ASMR. Hey, welcome, welcome. How, is, how are you doing? How was your Thanksgiving? Yeah, I, I don't like to go over to Portland. It's, um, well, if you go down downtown Portland, that's a nightmare because all the, some of them, um, they have the tram, the, um, not the tram, but the max, the, um, the light rail is what it's called. The light rail, uh, the, and so it's hard to get around in Portland to stay away from the light rail. And then also they have all these one ways. And I get confused about the one ways and which direction is this. And then I get going in circles trying to find the road to go the right one way. And so, no, I do not like uh, Portland. It was very relaxing. Awesome. Oh, that's special times. To, yeah, with your one year old. That's fun. Just be like, that sounds a nice Thanksgiving, a nice, uh, calm, peaceful Thanksgiving. 
Yeah, I probably most any I haven't driven in like big cities much at all, except for Portland, Oregon. And it's not huge. But yeah, I bet I would not like Boston. It's like got a lot of one ways as well. Yeah, it sounds like a perfect day. Yeah, and honestly, um, I, I we do have a GPS, but I, I don't, Mike has it for his, he has it in his work vehicle. But uh, I, um, most of my Portland driving is prior to GPSs coming out or prior to us having one. Yep, yep. So, all right, guys, does anybody have any questions? I am going to go ahead and probably get off of here. I, I can see the turkey. <laughs> so it's just calling me saying, you've got to get this in the oven. You've got to get this in the oven. We So how we make our turkey is um, we don't stuff our turkey with stuffing. I don't do that. But I put um, citrus. So I'll put a lemon, lemons that I'll quarter up some lemons and I'll quarter up some oranges and an onion or two, probably just one onion and then a um, bunch of garlic I'll break down. And so I'll put all that, I'll shove that in the cavity of the turkey. And so that kind of flavors it from the inside out. And so all that citrus fruit, uh, mainly lemons and uh, oranges inside there go throughout the turkey. So um, with my wrists all messed up, uh, I'm going to have to have Mike help me cut the onions and the lemons and the oranges and we'll stuff it all in there. And then I take and I take some butter and I mix a bunch of seasonings and poultry spices in and sage. I love sage. Um, I'll mix that in with butter and then I'll take and smear that flavored butter all over the outside. And that's how I'll um, cook the turkey. Oh, you did the same, Katie? Yeah, nice and quiet. That's a great Thanksgiving. Uh, try slices under the skin. I haven't done that for turkey, but I have done that for whole chicken. For whole chicken, I've put uh, lemon slices under the skin. But uh, I haven't done that for a turkey yet. Uh, I Sometimes I'll take that herbed butter and I will slip that under the skin, some of the... Um, all seasoned up the butter and then I'll slip that under the skin. But um, I've done that, put the butter under the skin for the turkey and uh, uh, chicken. But uh, I haven't put slices for a turkey of the citrus fruit. I just usually quarter them and stuff them, just stuff the cavity full of citrus fruit, onions, garlic, uh, and stuff like that. Yeah, H7, if you were closer, we would invite you over. <laughs> but, uh, you have a place like that? They try, oh, but how not the yard? Yeah, yeah. Um, Fabric Depot was like that, but they closed. <laughs> now you're getting hungry and the fridge is far away. Yeah, we're going to make um, mashed potatoes, real mashed potatoes. I'll put a couple of cloves of garlic in with the potatoes as they're boiling. So the cloves of garlic will uh, soften. And then we'll mash those right up in with the potatoes. So they'll be kind of garlicky potatoes. And then homemade gravy and uh, green bean casserole with the crunchy onions and stuff on top. That's our favorite part is the crunchy onions. Stuffing. Now, our stuffing, we are going to be putting um, gizzards in. I'll fry up some gizzards and put in. Some people I know do not like that, and some people say, ew, but um, that's how we make ours is we make it with gizzards. And then I'm going to be making a, like a cheesy corn casserole. And we made homemade rolls yesterday that we already have some left. I think that's it. I think that's what we're having today. And then that will be enough leftovers through Monday or more. And so probably Sunday I'll make uh, turkey and dumplings is what we'll make for tomorrow. Yeah, I love garlic mashed potatoes. We just put a few cloves of garlic right in with the um, potatoes as they're boiling. And so it softens them. And so when you mash the gar uh, potatoes up, you can mash the garlic right in with them. 
That's how we do ours. And probably use way more butter than we need today. This is probably the one day of the year where we use way too much butter and actual butter. We don't use um, margarine or anything like that in our house. It has to be actual butter. So, yeah. Yeah, when we're boiling the potatoes, just throw a couple of uh, peel the cloves of garlic, peel them and just throw them in with. And as they're boiling, it softens those as well. Yeah, that's how we, I do it. Sometimes if I have cream cheese, I'll put a little bit of cream cheese in my mashed potatoes. Turkey sandwiches, turkey enchiladas, turkey tacos. Yeah, <laughs> in your Bubba Gump voice. <laughs> I was just talking about Forrest Gump. I would like to watch that. I need to see if I have it. I have like Netflix and Hulu, but that's it. So I don't think for it. I'm going to look and see. I was just talking about Forrest Gump the day before yesterday. So, yeah. Uh, turkey enchiladas. We like enchiladas in our house. We like tacos too. We had fish tacos on uh, Tuesday. So yeah, and we do usually turkey and dumplings and the whole works. I think our turkey is um, 15 pounds, a little over 15 pounds. So there'll be a lot of leftovers. <laughs> so, all right, guys, I got to get that turkey in the oven. oven. It's 15 pounds. So if I don't get it in the oven soon, it's never going to be done in time. So, all right, guys, make sure to come tomorrow. I'm going to be doing giveaways. I'm going to be giving away pendants, magnets, uh, whatever else I can find. Uh, maybe some ornaments I think I'll give away. Um, so, yeah, pendants, magnets, ornaments, something in there. So, uh, tomorrow night's live stream is going to be the last live stream of this year for me. So, uh, tomorrow at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 6 o'clock. Uh, West Coast time, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And I'm going to be live painting. You guys can watch me paint. We can hang out. And it's probably going to be about a two-hour live stream. So it'll be a little bit longer of a live stream because it'll be the last one of the year. So come hang out with me tomorrow evening. Yeah, 8 p.m. for Central Standard Time, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thanks, H7. So, yeah. I hope to hang out and chat with you guys all tomorrow evening and you guys have a great rest of your day. And I appreciate every one of you guys. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. You guys are all so awesome and you have an awesome, awesome rest of your day. All right. Talk to you guys later.